All right, Arlo. Buddy, this is the first time you're gonna be home alone this long. Hey, look at me, I'm trusting you. I want the house in the exact same condition when I come back, okay? Don't make me regret this, please. Please don't make me regret this. Exact same condition when I get back. Be a good boy. I hope this isn't a bad idea. I'm a little bit nervous. Arlo? Oh God. No, what did he do? No! No! Oh! <laughs> Let's face it, leaving your doorman home alone with free roam in the house for the very first time is a pretty scary thing. You have no idea what you're gonna come home to. So today I'm leaving my doorman Arlo home alone for the very first time for many hours and I'm gonna leave out a few tempting things for him, a few of the children's toys he knows he's not supposed to touch uh, and that kind of thing, just kind of, you know, see how he does. But we're also gonna talk about how you can go about transitioning your Doberman from being kind of contained in the house when you leave to having completely free roam. So my Doberman Arlo is about 11 months old now and he's been showing some really great signs that he's ready for this. He kind of knows the boundaries of what's acceptable in the home, what to chew on, what not to chew on. He's fully potty trained. Uh, he knows which toys are his and which toys are the kids' toys and he knows to leave the kids' toys alone uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, but all this has been while we're either home with him or just gone for very short periods of time. So how's Arlo going to act when I leave him home alone for hours on end all to his own devices? Well, we're going to find out. Okay, before we do, let's talk a little bit about getting to the point where you can leave your doorman home alone with free roam of the house while you're gone. Now, I'm a big believer that transition should be kind of a slow, gradual one with baby steps all along the way, but there are about three main phases that you'll probably go through, and I definitely went through with Arlo um, during this process. The first phase is what I call the contained phase. Now, this is when the puppy is brand new to your home. Usually, they're within the ages of eight weeks to 16 weeks of age. Um, during this time, when you leave the house, the puppy's gonna be generally completely contained. Now, you can do this in their crate, or um, what I prefer is a pen setup, such as this one that's on your screen right now. It allows you to make a really uh, just controlled environment, a safe place for your dog. And when you leave, it really should be kind of short periods of time during this phase, because a young puppy can't hold their bladder for uh, very long. A good rule of thumb is they can hold their bladder for about one hour for every month old they are. So a two month old puppy can hold their bladder for two hours, three month old for three hours, and so on. Um, up to about six months of age, when they get there, the dog can hold it for about six hours and that's usually about where they stay. Now, if you have to be gone longer than that, um, make sure you have a friend or family member come home, let the dog out so they can go potty in the correct place where they're supposed to go, maybe play with them, exercise them a little bit, and then put them back in their controlled environment. Uh, because you don't want them to have accidents in there, because if they do, it really just sets back potty training down the road, makes that a little bit more difficult. Um, so make sure they're well exercised before you leave and that their pen is well set up. Now, as for the pen setup, this is what I like to do. I like to have that mobile pen set up on a surface that's easily cleanable, like tile or hardwood or something like that. Uh, inside, I like to have two water bowls. It's really good for the dog to have a backup, preferably the water bowls on different sides of the little pen, uh, because if they knock one water bowl over when you leave early on, which is possible, it's good for them to have a backup. Uh, also, a really soft, plush bed to make them feel comfortable. Now, nothing expensive because there's a good chance that they're going to destroy this at some point. Um, but I also like to wrap it with a blanket. It helps last a little longer, keep it from getting destroyed a little longer. It's also easier to clean. You just throw the blanket in the wash. Um, but by wrapping it in a blanket, they have a blanket to kind of suck on, which is, you Doberman owners know what I'm talking about with this pacifier sucking that these Doberman puppies do, but they like to grab on blankets and just kind of suck on it and keep it in their mouth and hold it almost like a security for them. And a lot of times they'll fall asleep like that. So if you wrap your bed with a blanket, you can a lot of times help your dog feel comfortable um, while you're gone a lot easier. So uh, also if you need to lay down pee pads, just in case, depending on the age, it's good to lay down pee pads over the whole area as well. And different toys of different textures and types, at least one plus toy and maybe a puzzle toy or something frozen that'll really help engage them while you're gone. But this is the setup that I generally like to have uh, for this contained stage.
Now the next stage is a partial freedom stage. This is like a transition stage. This is between about the age of 16 weeks of age to roughly 10 months of age. And during this time, I like to have the pen wrapped around the dog door so that when they come into the house, they're still kind of contained, but they have free roam of the backyard as well. Now, if you don't have that mobile pen, you can always put a crate up against a dog door as well and have the same effect. Um, but the great thing about this is it helps them with potty training immensely and they can be left just a little bit longer. It helps them to go longer with you being gone because they can potty themselves in the backyard um, and then come in and they can also uh, exercise, let out some energy out there and it really helps with the separation anxiety. Just make sure your yard is set up for this as well. Now the next stage is a full freedom stage and that's from about ages 10 months and on depending how your dog is doing. This is a stage I'm entering with Arlo right now and uh, it's really kind of scary once you get this. This is where the pen or the crate just gets folded up and put away and Arlo's gonna have free roam of the backyard. He can come in through the doggy door and have free roam of a good chunk of the house. Now I believe a baby step so if you want to cordon off just like one room when they come in you could do that and then expand it from there. But um, Arlo's going to have access to my kitchen, my living room, my front room, a few hallways. I'm going to close the doors to a couple rooms that I don't want him getting into. Um, and I have a baby gate on the stairs leading upstairs. But in general, he's going to have a ton of freedom. And lastly, you know, why not have a way to look at your dog while you're gone, while you're at work or wherever you are. This day and age, there's no reason not to have a remote camera that you can check anywhere straight from your phone. That actually brings me to the next thing I really want to mention to you guys. It's a cool thing that could help with this transition period is uh, a camera such as this Pet Cube Cam. Now, Pet Cube was nice enough to sponsor this video and provide this camera to me to test out and to uh, help keep an eye on Arlo during this transition. Now, using a remote camera like this that you can access from your cell phone anywhere, from work, from anywhere when you're out and about, is a great way just to have peace of mind, both when your dog's a young pup contained in a crate and also when you're going into the transition stage and actually giving your dog free roam. Um, and it's just great to know you're not gonna come home to a destroyed house because you can check in anytime. Now in the case of Pet Cube Cam, not only can you see your dog, but you can also talk and interact with your dog. That's all thanks to the premium two-way audio with noise canceling microphone and high fidelity speaker. It also has a really nice 110 degree wide uh, field of view so you can see pretty much a whole room really easily. Um, it's got night vision mode, uh, eight times digital zoom so I can get those nice close-ups of Arlo while he's being a complete angel. Right Arlo? Complete angel. Now it also has pet detection, which is smart notifications that are pushed straight to your cell phone when it detects sound or motion so you know when to check in on your dog. It also has vet chat, which is kind of cool. It's a way you can directly connect with a veterinarian from your uh, pet cube app. And if you have any kind of concerns about your dog, it is free the first chat, but it is a subscription uh, add on after that. And finally, there is a Pet Cube Care subscription option, which gives you access to video history, uh, pet care perks, and smart alerts for barking or meows if you're using it for your cat, and pet or human detection. Now, I am really excited to see what Arlo's up to using this camera while I'm gone, so let's go out there and find a place to install this. So the camera came packaged in this little box here, um, packaged real tightly in there and it displayed the product really well, which I really liked. And then uh, when you open it up, you know, I was a little concerned about build quality because um, it is relatively inexpensive, but I was pleasantly surprised. This thing does seem to have pretty uh, thick plastic on it and a stout little hinge, uh, which is nice. And it's a real nice modern minimalist design, which I always appreciate. Um, goes well in a modern home. And um, <laughs> If you are wanting to check this out, like I said, it's this one's relatively inexpensive. Um, I'm not allowed to tell you the price on the video, otherwise I would. But if you, uh, I did link to it down in the description below, the Amazon link. So if you click on that, it'll go to the listing on Amazon. You can check it out. Um, if you do purchase through that link, I do get a small commission for referring you over, um, which costs nothing to you, zero cost to you, but uh, Amazon pays it and it's a great way to help support this channel and keep the free content coming to you every single week. Okay, uh, now we went over the camera. Let's uh, get it set up real quick so we can uh, spy on Arlo. One thing guys, I do really appreciate about this camera, which might seem small to you, especially because all these fancy features, but I appreciate some of the simple things like this really good non-slick padding on the bottom that's thick so you can set it somewhere, it won't slide around, and it's magnetic so you can stick it to pretty much anything, almost on any angle, and if the surface you don't want to stick it to is not magnetic, it comes with this little disc here and this little uh, adhesive. So you can uh, put this adhesive disc, uh, peel this backing, stick it somewhere, and then this, boom, will just stick right on this little disc perfectly. So you can mount on a wall or anything. I appreciate that. I don't like pulling out tools for uh, silly things like this. So I'm just gonna download the PetCube app and make an account.
My camera's already plugged in, a little light's flashing on it, so I'm going to press the small button on the front until I hear her talking to me. Ready for setup. And then I'm just going to follow the instructions in the app here, which involves scanning a quick barcode. QR scanned. Connecting. All set. Try connecting to live stream. All right, it's all set up. Like one minute set up, pretty quick and easy. And we're already rolling. All right, we're all set up. I got a bunch of toys out here, both toys that Arlo should be chewing on and toys that he should not. Some of my kids' toys are intermixed in there, so we'll see how well he can uh, distinguish what he should be chewing on and what he shouldn't. I got this camera set up, watching the kitchen and the living room. Of course, I got the pet cube set up, watching the, uh, the main living room here where Arlo likes to spend a lot of his time. And this camera, watching the front room and uh, the front door. All right, let's head off, see how he does. Come on, Arlo. Be a good boy, okay? Be a good boy. Well, I'm out at a local shopping center. I think I'll uh, go find a place to take a break and uh, check on Arlo. Arlo, come here. Hey, buddy. Yeah, I see you, buddy. Arlo, sit. <laughs> He's sat. <laughs> He's a good dog. He definitely puts up with a lot. It's looking like Arlo's actually being a pretty good boy. I think uh, I've about burned enough time out here. Let's head on back and uh, See if everything is as it looks in the camera. Sit. Sit. Guys, I'm actually really impressed with Arlo. He did really well for his first crack at this. And hey, if you want to pick up that pet cube camera for yourself, it's a really cool little device. It'll be down in the description down below. And I'll also include some links to some of their uh, more fancier cameras, which are actually pretty cool. They have some versions that can dispense treats remotely from your cell phone. Uh, you can use a little laser beam, a laser light remotely to interact with your dog. Um, all while you're talking to them. It's actually pretty cool. I'll include links to the camera I used and those uh, fancier ones down below. If you're looking for a cool gift for somebody you know, this might be a really unique one to consider. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. Hit that subscribe button down below and the bell icon next to it if you love learning about the Doberman breed together, and we'll keep doing that. And uh, of course, keep being great Doberman breed ambassadors and spreading the word about how amazing this breed of dog really is. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.